What's up, what's up, guys? Today is May 1st, 2014. This is Horseplay Live Uncut, episode 20, May Mother Flowers. Hashtag Retro Friday. We're keeping the Retro Friday spirit going. We're supposed to have Chip Silla from the B-Team podcast joining us, but uh, he's having a little late. He does have his show right before us. We're just going to probably just work him into the, into the show once we get started. This is the pregame, yo. Yeah, it is a pregame right now, but we're uh, we're actually going to get him in right now. He's coming in, um, but for some reason I can't add him to the call because he's already in the call. He's just got to join it, actually. So as soon as he does, we will actually get going. I know it's kind of we're actually not being like we're supposed to. I hate starting late. Yeah. Uh oh. I thing I can just connect it again. Probably Let's see. Hmm. Hey, uh Chip, we already got a call, man. All right, ready. We already Hello? I don't see him in the car right now. Something weird just. Right. Are we good now? All right, there he is. He's just gonna answer. Go ahead, Yoke. Turn your camera on. We'll get it started, and we'll turn it on. I don't even know you to start, so I have the stopwatch ready. Kicking the old school. Ray, ray, ray. Chip. All right. I, I, I got to get this. Well, the chat's already getting pretty active. It is, dude. We got uh, we got a couple of people actually in my chat already saying, you know, hey, what the heck's going on right now? And um, yeah, it's uh, <laughs> I'm not liking it right now already. That's because you're a perfectionist to a fault. Well, there he goes again. We'll just get it started, and he can just, just roll them in afterwards. Roll with the punches. That's what you do with podcasts. Yeah, we gonna do it. We gonna do that. We gonna do that right now. We gonna do that right now. Right now. Right now, sir. Not right now. Not right later. Right now. I don't know, man. You, that I I see it now, yo. I do. I see it. All right, starting. Um, Music. You're referring to the robot penis? Right. Yes, we are. <laughs> wow, I didn't, I'm just going to think like you didn't even say that. Wow, my camera's off again, but we'll get it going. <clears throat> my camera? No, mine is just... Alright, starting, starting the stream now, and I'm going to do a countdown for music. Here we go. Two...
This is Horseplay Geeks and Gamers Horseplay Live. This is May 1st, 2014. And yes, that is in turn. This is episode 20 titled May Flowers, May Mother Flowers. Hashtag Retro Friday. Once joined again by my partner in crime and residential. Residential. <laughs> Kill my ears. Welcome. All right, we're going to get into the call right now. I think we should take it from this top. Cause that was crazy. <laughs> what, 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 how was it so loud? I don't understand. You, you had the remote volume all the way down, all the oh, way up. Yeah. You had the remote volume all the way up and you only faded out your local volume. So it was blasting in my ears and messing up my local recording. So sorry guys for listen, listening on uncut. Yeah. You're going to give me a lot of work editing this week again. I'm not trying to do it on purpose, man. I really want to do it the right way. I mean, <laughs> I really do. I'm not trying to do that. But we will start over right here. Welcome, geeks and gamers, to Horseplay Live. This is May 1st, 2014. This is episode 20, May Mother Flowers. Hashtag Retro Friday. And once again, I'm joined by my partner in crime, Yogi Zilla. What's going on, big man? Hootie Hoot. Hootie Hoot. I'm I had a really to... energetic uh, thing, but then my eardrums got blown out, and I was like, I, I can't I can't do anything. <laughs> Dude, I'm so sorry. I thought it was the same as last week. We're still trying to get Chipzilla in the call, actually. So, um, did you just call him Chipzilla? Call. I did say Chipzilla because he's, he's your boy, man. It's like <laughs> you guys are one sometimes. I did say Chipzilla. I'm not he's on part, purpose. He's <laughs> part of the, the Zilla unofficial uh group yeah he is he is he is part of the unofficial he is part of the official group you know of the of the allgames.com is where we're at of course chips chip sella is from b team podcast and agents of shield podcast um he's uh his twitter handle of course is at captain chaos and uh there he goes again i want to see what kind of what's going on with him Computer's been locking up, giving him some food bar. So, but we are going to get him in the show when we when we can get him in. Of course, I got my pings rolling like crazy. Um, well, let's keep it, yeah, we'll keep it moving because he's having some issues. Keep it moving on, Yogi. All right, so uh, I guess we should. So he's going to be here any second. You want to just jump straight to the news this time? Yeah, we can just go right to the news and, so and get yeah. some of that stuff done, and then we can have some more talk time with him. Yeah, Definitely. but uh, quick, quick plug, you know, make sure you do catch us on uh, allgames.com where we have what I've been cl- calling tentatively horseplay replay, because it's a tongue twister, <laughs> and that's at five, around 5 p.m. Eastern on allgames.com, or you can catch our previous week's episode, we have an archive there and a blog, so check that out, and of course our main HQ, our main hub, geekyantics.net. And, uh, of course, we get the voicemail line, 206-415-4987, if you want to join a conversation and uh, be part of the, the geeky antics. I mean, that's really what it is, shenanigans and silliness. Uh, you can also email us, if you're, if you're not much of a voice person, maybe you're shy, email us at uh, geekyantics at gmail.com. And we got a bunch of other things coming up, uh, including the new Twitch channel, might do the YouTube, uh, though I'm kind of hesitant about YouTube because they got a lot of crap going on, but... Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, we got we got some stuff setting up, and you know, just gonna say it real quick. Uh, we were just on the Gaming Death podcast, who's now uh, part of the Geeky Antics Network, 
and they're they're officially our pre-show at 9 p.m. And they've been doing this for a long time uh, as the gaming podcast, like four years. So we're happy to have them. Um, and uh, you can catch them at GamingDeath.com. And, uh, yeah, I think it covers all the bases. You can see their feed and uh, all the pertinent links over at GeekyAntics.net. And uh, so, so tonight on the show, we're going to contri- continue the Retro Friday, hashtag Retro Friday series. To kind of just get back to the basics. And, you know, the days when games were fun, had a lot of replay value. And uh, we weren't quite as jaded or cynical. Uh, and, and, and again, I say, remember, keep an open mind. Retro gaming, even simple games or indie games, they're not just for hipsters, you know? And people that are just like pixel art. You know, it's, it's about returning to the core, the true essence of gaming. You know, having fun. Um, right. And we'll be talking Marvel hu- Puzzle Quest. I was going to say Puzzle Quest. Marvel Puzzle Quest. Yeah, it's a new game. Marvel Puzzle Quest and uh, Hearthstone. Uh, as soon as Chips joins us, we'll be doing getting deep into that as part of the feature discussion. But uh, on to the news. You want to share some of the news that we have uh, today? Or you want me to take this, Obi? Oh, yeah, go, go ahead. Wait, 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 get, wait. Uh... You see? Oh, he's here. <laughs> Chip, finally. Sorry, back. guys. Everything locked up. And and for those that are actually watching live, I, I'm sorry, guys. We're we're getting everything, cameras up. But we're he actually is here, so we're actually going to start this. Yogi, if you want to keep, uh, just talk to Chip a little bit, um, and uh, I will get everything set up so we can actually get this going and get it going right. How's that? So yeah, uh, Chip, you came just in time. We're just going to blaze through news real quick so we get into the hot and heavy of the evening, the main event of the evening. But uh, Hopefully we get a bunch of uh, the uh, B-Team Alliance joining us. That'd yeah. be nice. That'd be cool. We, we're set up for call-ins, and by the way, that's we'll ever play them. So now we have some hard numbers to back that up. And I can tell you, a lot of us uh, in our community are still recovering from the Steam Winter Sale. We have a massive backlog of games, and they're still doing sales. That would be Yogi, everybody. Hey, I'm not the only one. It's a lot of us. I want to try to hide the fact that I, mean, I am one of them. I am. You're the main one. But, <laughs> but I've actually been genuinely... Playing each of those games, recording gameplay videos, streaming them, and enjoying every one of them. It's just so. It's actually a case where there's not a lot of crap. It's just a lot of good games, and I don't know which where to start. Like really, it's it's crazy. So here, here's some quick stats for people to like numbers. And uh, uh, Chip, have you heard any any of this? What's that? Uh, stri- st- people w- watching the streams and all that. No, the the Steam uh, usage data that uh, ARS oh, Technica okay. got. I thought you said streaming. Okay. I'm sorry, yes, yeah, Steam, Steam. You know, Vo- the Valve thing, the, the PC Master Race thing. <laughs> yeah, you know my uh, take on that. I know, I know. But uh, some interesting stuff. So here we go. Uh, so these are some, some of the key takeaways that I noticed. It's a very rich, long study. There's a lot of stuff in there. But this is what I pulled away from it. So 37% of the 781-plus million, so over 781 million games on Steam libraries worldwide have not been launched even once. 37% of those games, they've been purchased and never even touched. (laughs) All right? Okay. So we can make more jokes. I fall in there. (laughs) We can make more jokes about that now. (laughs) Um... So 3.8 billion hours have been played on Dota 2 and counting. And that should be no surprise because that's a game that everybody on Steam gets for free. And it's also, uh, you know, League of Legends right now is the most played game online, but Dota 2 is not far behind it. So pretty interesting stuff. No World thanks to Chris. Is... <laughs> oh, 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 thanks to him. What? What did he have to do with it? No, no thanks to Chris because he doesn't even know what League of Legends is. Oh okay? yeah, <laughs> and we're talking about Chris Gannon over at uh, Gaming Death uh, Podcast. We were just on there. You can check check them out again. We had some we had some fun. Though. Oh, we joined the last leg of it. He missed most of the freaking train wreck. <laughs> it was great. It was a good show. It was a really good show. We had some good good discussions. But um, another here's another fun fact: six hundred percent more time has been put into Modern Warfare Two multiplayer. As opposed to the campaign, or, you know, single player experience, six hundred percent more, or six times more, if you prefer, if you don't like percentages, that's pretty crazy. That's, that's a pretty significant number. It's a lot, and, and it shows that it's that there's less and less to me. There's less and less people that actually care about single player stories. I know, I know, Chip, you like single player in games, right? 
Yeah, I'm not much of a multiplayer game. Everyone's, it depends on the game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I obviously, guess. Marvel Puzzle Quest, you, you like the multiplayer there. <laughs> you, you know, uh, being running this alliance is becoming a full-time job. Mm. <laughs> We're going to talk about that, because there's a thing that yeah. happens with uh, multiplayer games where you... There's a thin line between being active in it and enjoying it, and then being active in it and it becomes mm. a job, and then you lose the enjoyment. I think that's a trap that a lot of us games fall into. We like OD on games, and then we lose the love for it. And that's why we're so jaded. <laughs> J -j jaded. I I'm knew. Sorry. I was waiting for it. I, was, I knew someone was gonna <laughs> sing. I was waiting. Burst out in the song and podcast. That's good. <laughs> and just a quick shout out again. Uh, the Twitch channel for Gaming Death is Twitch.tv forward slash Gaming Death. All right. So make, give, give those guys some love. Okay. Right, so here's another stat about Steam. The top 10 most owned games, and this, again, should be no shocker, but we got hard data backing this up now. Dota 2, Team Fortress 2, Half-Life 2, The Lost Coast. I'm a little surprised about that one. Out of all the Half-Life games, that one, okay. And this is an order from the most owned to the least owned. Counter-Strike Source, um, Half-Life Deathmatch, Left 4 Dead 2, Counter-Strike, Half-Life 2, uh, Portal and Counter Strike Condition Zero. I don't think we have quite enough Counter Strike there. There's quite a few Half Lives in there too. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and this, and like we're still Half -Life waiting. One, one through twenty and <laughs> death match. <laughs> well, the funny thing is, we're still waiting for freaking Half Life Three, and I don't think it's anywhere near uh, Valve's like priority list. No. Um, and you know, this is interesting. Those are all Valve games. Now, if you go a little further in, deeper in the list, <laughs> yeah, he's like surprise. You know, if you go a little further, like to like deep top twenty, there's some like Civ Five, I think, was in there, or mm -hmm. Revolution. There's some non-Valve games, but most of it's Valve. Um, so it's it's kind of eh, I'm not, I'm I won't touch that right now. But Steam won't still won't confirm or deny these stats. But it is worth noting that um, Steam Greenlight for now is still going strong, and but they it's true that they definitely. Are getting rid of it. They haven't rescinded their remarks on that. In fact, uh, Valve co-founder Gabe Newell said earlier in this year that that he wants to make Greenlight go away. Exactly, and he said exactly said he go away because they are quote unquote evolving. And I don't. I'm hoping it's because they're gonna come out with something better that is less of a popularity contest and has not as much of a barrier to, of entry to, for the for the indie people and the smaller companies. Not that kind of barrier to entry. Sorry, dude. I, Come on. I, I never really understood Greenlight because it was almost like uh, Steam's version of American Idol, where uh, you know, <laughs> vote on you know these are the game, vote on the games, and the one that gets the most votes, we're going to fund or something to that effect, and uh, it just it just never seemed. Right. I know. I mean, I'm. You guys know me. I'm not a PC gamer, and it just I, something about it. You know, when we went to PAX last year, every indie that we spoke to, oh, we're on Steam Greenlight. Go vote for us. That was the plug at every booth. Um, and I just never really understood what what it meant if you got green lit. They would let you put their your game on their system. Well, they would feature it. It'd be like one of the featured games. Like a lot of the things we see come up that are early access on uh, right now on Steam are things that were greenlit, and and it gives them a lot more visibility. I think it's great. They do definitely need to remodel it, and a lot of people are saying a lot, a lot of sources I've talked with they're saying they're not going to get rid of it completely, even though that's what it sounded like. They're going to restructure it. But I love the model of mm. the user-driven, you know, vote with your wallet or vote with your influence kind of thing, like Kickstarter, Indiegogo, and there's a whole bunch of the kind of things out there already. You know, it, it, the diff only difference here is that people are, are not voting with their wallets, they're voting with their influence, with their friends, with their recommendations kind of thing. Um, and, it, you know, it, it's still a kind of currency, really. So there's no, I, don't, I don't see any difference in it. Mm. The problem is that due to, you know, a lot of the gamers that have poor taste, they, they tend to go for, like, the shooters. <laughs> and then the games that are really unique and look like they actually would be fun and different and bring us something fresh, they don't get the attention they deserve because, like, oh, look at that. that that's not, like, uh, you know, 
It's not like H Ultra HD graphics, you know. It's freaking 16-bit sprites or... Th oh, it's 64-bit. Who still does 64-bit anymore? I mean, stupid stuff like that. <laughs> yeah, but those are the guys and those are the gamers that actually are the the what's cool now kind of gamers. So those, like, the people that got all the 2014 games for every system. Okay, those are the people that are... are I'm going to jump on this bandwagon right now. Okay? Um, because they're still... We'll get into this later. I'm not even going to go into it. I, I was getting ready to rant. I'm not going to do that. Not right now. We got news to get through. I can't do it yet. Hell, we're I have my time. We're actually almost <laughs> done with uh, the the news, so we're doing pretty good. But um, if we if we have a chance, we'll free ball on it some more and, and kind of mm -hmm. talk about the current state of the gaming industry, which is a topic we always go back to. <laughs> I can see it in Ka Captain Chaos's eyes. He wants to talk about this. Oh, I know. This hits home for all of us, whether you're a PC gamer or not. Because it's just bad practices all over the place. But, you know, love it or hate it, the PC still is the most open, inviting, accessible platform for game developers. Uh, maybe, uh, and I'll agree... Uh, go ahead, go ahead. I'll Tim. agree with you there, but, uh, and, you know, you're talking about the state of gaming. Uh, the state of gaming is pretty freaking scary right now i think um you know we went to pax and we're gonna get into this chris later and I, all right but chris <laughs> and i were ready at 11 o'clock friday morning saying east the tabletop games were more interesting and there was more of them than there were video games period right i could have done i could have done a hell of a lot more tabletop videos than I would could have done um, video game interviews, and just because we are more a video game podcast than a tabletop, uh, I actually didn't do a few segments over at the tabletop. And but yes, the tabletop was far more interesting this year than the video games. I see. That's that's sad. Uh, but no, it's actually kind of cool. Yes, but. yeah. I was gonna say actually it's cool because I love tabletop games and um, it's funny. We we've come a long way. I, I, I hear from a lot of people that the online games have made it so that they connect with more people and make new friends. But that I, I think we're also going backwards again to a point where it's sharding the community and people becoming more antisocial and they're hiding behind the, the benefits of anonymity. So in tabletop, you just can't get around it. It's a social thing. Once in a while, it's not. Like, when you go to a hobby shop, and you run into the people playing D&D, &D, and you're like, hey, can I jump in this game? I got my character sheet. Hell no! <laughs> it's like, okay. And that's supposed to be a social thing, but whatever. Yeah, but, like, something like D&D &D is as social as who your group of friends you're playing with. Yeah, yeah and I get that. But, I mean, come on. It's well, but not any as game. Like, if you see a card game being played, Magic the Gathering, and you say, oh, I have my deck, or you see a card game being played, and I can't remember for the life of me what the other ones are, uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! or Pokemon, or whatever they have nowadays, um, but uh, I can't remember what the DN game was. Well, maybe it was just Magic in, in general, and you have your deck with you, but they're all like, no, we have this, we're doing this, this, and this. You can't play with us because we don't even know you. You might have some freaking crazy cards and want to get money off us or something. But, see, I, th I mean, and I'm not into the Magic or the D&D &D crowd um, to any extent. Mm -hmm. uh, though, they're a special breed, both of those. And th they are games where maybe uh, you... You're you're going to play, especially D and D. You're going to play with your friends. You're, you know, you're in the middle of a dungeon and adventure, et cetera. Someone popping in probably doesn't uh, uh, is conducive to that type of game. Magic probably to the same extent, unless unless you're in some type of tournament. Uh, and you know where I go, where I play a lot of tabletop. Uh, they have a day, and it's just everybody shows up, and you just meet a lot of great people, and get and hey, you know we walked in the store a couple of weeks ago, and uh, before we even got to the room I usually play in, two guys go, hey, you want to jump in and play Sentinels of the Multiverse with us? I looked at my nephew, and I was like, yeah, let's do it, and we played with those guys all afternoon. So, 
Um, I th- you know, tabletop, I think, is more social than magic or D&D. Is what I think I'm getting at here. And I think that's what Yogi was trying to get at, too. Yeah, yeah. Yes, no? Well, also, there's, there's some what? really good, like, DMs that they could work, you know, extra different variables into their campaign. You know, like someone shows up last minute mm-hmm. or they have to leave. You work in into the story, you know? That's part of the fun, mm-hmm. the narrative. Um, it's just funny, like, with uh, Tabletop, in a way, it's, it's uh, making a strong comeback. Not, not that it ever went away, mm-hmm. but it's becoming a lot more pervasive. And I've seen, like, Steve Jackson games, putting, they're putting out more games, uh, Looney Labs, and there's a lot of new de- new publishers out there, new, new developers, designers, doing stuff that's really cool. I'm, I'm excited mm-hmm. for that. But it's still funny that you catch the guys that are making it to a very exclusive experience rather than sharing it because that kind of thing you want to share and make meet more people to do it so you can do it more often. Because, I mean, I have, mm-hmm. I have a whole closet full of board games and, you know, tabletop games of all sorts. And, you know, I got the dungeon manuals of D&D and everything, the monster manuals, all that stuff. I got the calculators and the so- I even have software to help design campaigns. I oh, mean, yeah. I used to be really into it, but I don't really have that many people to do it. So I welcome anyone that just walks by and says, hey, you're into that? Cool. It's like a badge of honor. People should, yep. be, should embrace that kind of thing. But, uh, yeah, we're, we're, you know, we'll have to have a tabletop episode at some point. That's a whole different beast. Oh, definitely. But, uh, you know, the, the but, thing with Steam, with Valve, I think that they're uh, putting a little bit too much into the hopes of their Steam machines. And, uh, and I, ho- I hope they, don't, they do right by us and they don't put all their eggs in one basket. It's cool that they're doing that. I'm actually one of the few people that is excited about what they could do with that, what it could be become. But I don't want it to do pursue Steam machines and Steam OS in lieu of you know, throwing everything else against the wall and taking a crap on it or whatever. I don't like that part. And also, uh, Gaming Death in the chat says that he loved PAX this year. Uh, Chris Gannon again. He, he says that the indie scene was really great. And see, again, that kind of it's kind of goes in the same. It ha- it goes hand in hand. The the indie the indie scene and the, and the tabletop scene is is booming because I think gamers of all kinds as you know as a whole. We are just tired of the same regurgitated shit. We want something different to play. You know, if I see another shooter, as much as I love my tactical shooters, I'm going to gouge my eyes out. I mean... With a spoon. With a rusty spoon at that. Yeah, come on, I'm not seeing the chat. I thought I'm in the right place. Yeah, it's, uh, it's twitch.tv forward slash obi1x2. It's in the top of the show. Oh, I got too. Yogi. <laughs> yeah. I, oh, I, oh, I put the link in there, too. I simulcasted through there. <laughs> Chip doesn't we yeah, all, Chip all. doesn't want to be with us guys. <laughs> it hurts. He wants to be on Yogi's channel. It's, I'm, well, I'm I do. I, I do that so that anybody that hits the channel can come over there too. You know. Well, Yogi, your your uh, your channel is not streaming, Dick. Is it? We yeah, just I'm happy. have the big uh, Marvel puzzle quest thing. Oh yeah, it's audio only. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's why I don't do the video through there. So I just do the audio with a little overlay on it, so that people know if they want. That, that's for the mobile users. All so right. we got we got all kinds ah. of crazy stuff going on. But see, you gotta be careful, Chip. You're breaking this is what the I get for coming in late. You know? Yes, yeah, yeah. You're breaking the fourth wall here. I mean, we're, we're becoming self-aware. There we go. <laughs> all right, Captain Chaos. Now, Yogi has been. On me and on me and on me for the last two to three weeks saying, dude, you need to try. You know what? We'll talk about this in a minute. I wanna, it's about it's a, it's about uh, the Marvel puzzle quest. I want to mm-hmm. got some questions for you, but yo, you can keep going. Sorry. Oh, yeah, we're I'm, almost done I'm derailing anyway. this show, too. Come on. Don't you know? <laughs> we're, keeping, we're keeping the spirit going from our last thing tonight. <laughs> Gaming death. <laughs> so, yeah. That, uh, so, anyway, moving on. Uh, so, Microsoft and the world of Microsoft, the uh, Xbox Originals channel is coming out. And they, I was surprised that they had so many things lined up already, so many uh, shows and uh, partners lined up for it. And actually, at first I thought this was a huge joke, but mm-hmm. they have some pretty good programming, and I'm kind of hopeful about it. Uh, not just because I'm a little bit of an Xbox fanboy when it comes to the, uh, choosing the console, but mm-hmm. the fact that, you know, one of my favorite channels used to be sci-fi, and they've gone down to complete... You know, you know what? I mean, sci-fi oh, doesn't. Even, yeah, they don't even. They don't even play science fiction anymore. 
Mm-hmm. And the, that that name changed. Ever since they changed the, this, they changed the name, it's like they went to full retard mode. And I'm sorry you to mean say that. Fee? Yeah, CP. <laughs> when they became CP? It's terrible. Yeah. But, uh, but uh, you know, the, the, the Super is supposedly producing the Halo TV series. I was like, damn, that's kind of a big player to be doing that. I'm a little intrigued. What, what do you guys think about this? I can't wait. Um, I'm not really a Halo kind of guy. And we're talking about the Halo, the game, right? With the space shooting the big plasma guns and all that stuff, right? Mm-hmm. Correct? Mm-hmm. Um, well, I just, I don't, you know, there's a couple Halos. Uh, I'm not really a Halo guy, but the sense of it could being like a series or something, I would actually really, really want to get into it and make sure I watch it every week. I mean, that's just me, but I'm a, I'm a retard sometimes, too. But, you know. I, I just never got into the Halo mythology or universe, so, I don't know. <laughs> that's it, you know. I, I'm in the same boat. I, I enjoy playing Halo, but it's not like I'm so into the mythos that I need more Halo content. I think I've watched um, some of the stuff they have like on Netflix, the CG movies and stuff, and Red vs. Blue is, is entertaining, though that's not officially a Microsoft thing. But uh, I'm not like one of those people. Like, the thing, it's funny, as much as I love Xbox and, I, and I've been on Xbox Live since the, pretty much the very beginning... I wasn't one of those people that thought Halo was revolutionary. Because as a PC gamer, I, I played that game a long time ago. It was called Tribes. It was called Doom. <laughs> you know, but they made it seem like, this is brand new. Oh my gosh. You, you got guns and your space marines and, and you can ride vehicles. This, who thought about this? How did they come up with this? Did they just sleep and have a dream? <laughs> it's like, yeah, they, 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 that game's come out several times on the PC. Just, just, just so you know. I'm not trying to be a snob about it, but it's I, I, it's like when people... You ever hear a song that's played on the radio, and people are like, Oh, I love that song. That's the best song they came out with. Like, well, that's a cover of a song by so-and-so. And it's so frustrating. People are like, I can't... That, 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 he's such a good songwriter. They wrote this song, and look at that beat they made. That entire song is a cover. None of that is there. The only thing that's there is their voice. And the, the obsolete me. beat that they made that goes like one step faster or one step slower. <laughs> it's, it, it, it frustrates me, man. I think Chip was gonna say something too. I think it, it grinds his gears as well. Uh huh. <laughs> well, um, I th- I think the I think what Halo did was it was the best first person shooter for a console at the time. Um, you know, we we had them before, but this is the first time where uh, the controls felt right, and um, the game was just a you know a quality first person shooter. Um, so yes, like you said, it's been on, Tribes was on PC before, but this is the first time that they actually were able to bring it to your TV. Yeah, and and I, and I get that. Uh, I mean, that's, that's the argument about consoles altogether is that they. Have a, it's more uniform experience, it's more convenient, you know, um, and, and of course it's the out-of-box experience. You don't have to deal with drivers and getting every all your settings optimized and, you know, mm-hmm. patching things mm-hmm. up. You know, it, it's a very convenient and um, less intimidating experience. And as much as I love the PC, I don't recommend it for everyone because you need to be a specific kind of person. As far as variety, PC is great. But, uh, you know, the community sometimes can be caustic and elitist, and you got to be a little technically savvy or not be intimidated by things like things crashing or sputtering down because you're running too many things in the background and think you can do it. (laughs) I mean, there's a lot of variables. You can't be like me. (laughs) There, that's it. Well, uh, That's, that's the best way I can explain it. That's why I can't stand PC gaming is dealing with settings and, uh, you know, I want to be able to pop the game into my uh, system and it plays. No bullshit. See, that's not why tweaking I... settings, not... And it's one of the reasons why I avoid PC gaming like the plague. <laughs> well, that and, uh, hurt. that and using uh, keyboard and mouse, I know a lot of people are not keen on that. See... Oh, no. They've, Steam already has answers for that because they have big picture mode, which no one really seems mm-hmm. to really use. And you could you could you could play Steam games on your TV right now, and get mm-hmm. that console effect. 
and most of the games do come with controller support and if they don't have native controller support you could use the macro function on your, on your gamepad to program the keys and, and make it do what you want it to do so but again it's not as as convenient and as fun as an out of box experience. You have to kind of get it where you want it to first, and then you can really enjoy it. So I totally get that, and hopefully, you know, to me, the, the, what Valve should be saying with you know, I don't want to go back to this again, but I think what Valve should be saying with Steam Machine is that their promise should be, hey, we're gonna make PC less of an asshole for you, so you can enjoy your games. That, that that should be their their value proposition. I think that 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 would resonate more with people than uh, bringing PC gaming to the living room. I mean that's that's value added, but I think that should be the promise. Hey, we're gonna make PC gaming less of an asshole. Yay, nay, <laughs> yay or nay, no guys. Yay. Never gonna happen because the pro <laughs> the, Well, I mean the beauty of uh, the console is it's. It's a set uh, set of components. You know, it's a fixed set of components. Everybody has the same product, this and whatever. And you know, you have a lesser. You know, there is no uh, consistent set of components in everybody's uh, system. Right. Well, and that's what makes I think what that's what makes PC gaming somewhat fun. Um, cause it makes you, makes the people that want to do it actually spend the money to actually get those decent video cards. I'm not saying the best of the best, but the decent video cards, the decent processors, the decent computer as a whole. Um, yes, do I have some pretty elaborate stuff for my gaming stuff for what games I play? Yeah, very much so. Uh, the average person wouldn't get what I have, but does that make it fun? Definitely. Does it make it to where you know where if you're uh, if you play World of Warcraft and you're a huge PvPer, okay, and you play with a multi button like a Razor Naga or, or a, a, a G three six thirty or whatever for Logitech? If you play with those, you have all those buttons at your fingertips. Well, then you can actually identify when you when you see somebody that doesn't use a multi button mouse. Uh, and the, the the earliest detection is basically backpedaling. You know, that's we just don't do that because we strafe and we move with our mouse. You know, just those little advantages are what make people good at the games that they're playing. Oh, and of course, skill. I mean, if you don't have skill, <laughs> then you suck. But yeah. if you guys know what I mean, it's not something that you know. I can sit there and play League of Legends all day, have all the best of the stuff. But if I suck in lane phase, I'm not going to get to mid game and late game. I mean, that's you know, that's just an instance. But you guys know what I mean? Yeah, see, I, I get the concept. I mean, I've never tried League of Legends, but well, well, I'm just not not as a whole. I mean, even if you played any game, mm -hmm. um, and and you have a say uh, a mouse that has a little bit better, um, what is it? DPI is what it's called. Yeah, the, <clears throat> it, it responds yeah. faster. Or uh, you have a you play a game that you need if you have a multi button mouse such as a Razer Naga, uh, and you have those twelve extra buttons at your thumb, would that give you an advantage for whatever game you want to play that needs multi, uh, you know, a multitude of buttons? This is what I was asking. I mean, it's not just League of Legends is in general, but just any game. All right. Well, I mm -hmm. and. I, if you ever saw my lack of skill with WASD, you would understand that. You know, forget it. I, when we were at PAX, I was playing the new Orcs Must Die, and it was set up on PC. I didn't want to play it, and they made me play it. And after one round, the guy realized, okay, I'll take over and play for you because I am, you know, I just can't do it. I'm. Well, you know, I've never sat down to spend time to, you know, I'm still a hunt and pecker uh, typer. So it was like, no, until you have it on a joystick, I don't even want to touch this. And, and I know you want to say something, Yogi, I know, because we've been cutting you off the whole time. But to those, to that right there, there are some people where they are better console players. There are some people mm -hmm. where they are better strategy players. Like, I'm going to give you an instance, and then Yogi, by all means, take it away. My wife, okay, I got her into playing Hearthstone, okay? 
I love her to death. With all my heart. I would die for her, this woman. But I will never, ever play her stone with her again competitively. <laughs> okay? He's saying, you know, this is, we're having, we have our three games a week. Those videos are coming out. But it's getting kind of boring when I'm losing three in a row. You know, She's kicking just, your ass in Hearthstone? Yes, because, now, listen, I am a person that thinks just like I am thinking, like I'm sitting. I see the cards, this is what I think. I don't think about that this plus three shaman card that costs one mana crystal, I can put that on this guy that's a 7-7 seven, seven plus one to everybody. I can give him attack three, that gives him ten, but I don't think like that. She does. She thinks well in advance. She beats my ass in chess, too. I don't like it. That's why I don't play her in chess anymore. That's but why she's a wife. They're evil and yeah, evil well, masterminds. Definitely. But if you were to ask her to say, hey, hey, Missy, go ahead and go try, um, you know, I'll just say, say it, League of Legends or Arma 2, she's going to go, huh? Just because she has no desire to play those games. These A strategy game for her is the most gratifying time to where she can just sit and think about how to deviously destroy somebody from the inside out. And it happens to be on her stone. <laughs> now, will I make sure she tries the Marvel Puzzle Quest and all that good stuff? I will definitely do that. And I will do that for you, Captain. She'll like right Marvel thing. Puzzle okay. Quest. She's going to like Marvel Puzzle Quest. If, if she likes that abomination called Candy Crush, Marvel Puzzle Quest is like a billion times better. Uh, it actually has strategy... Oh you know, match like right. I, I usually think match three games are uninspired, but Marvel Puzzle Quest, and again, we're gonna get into that. It, it's actually got some that? depth to it. It's free. It's free game. If you play yeah, it a certain way, game. if you play it a certain way, it's like Hearthstone. <laughs> and, and we're we we will definitely get into how to avoid paying for Marvel Puzzle Quest because because it is probably one of the lowest paywalls in any of these games. Once you say Yogi. Yeah, absolutely. Because up up until um, I started funding the Alliance in the four or five months I played, I had only spent fifteen dollars. Yep. And I really didn't even have to spend that if I uh, didn't want to and wanted to support the game. You know, at least give them a tip from time to time. Exactly. Now that now that we have the alliance, I've probably dropped eighty bucks buying uh, <laughs> all our spots, or almost all our spots. Yeah, um, we do, the two other commanders have uh, contributed as well. Yeah, yeah. so so yeah. I'm actually getting in this game to join you. Is that what this is? Hmm. So I'm actually getting in this game to join you. Uh, no, we're not accepting any noobs right now. <laughs> but you could join us indirectly by becoming our Facebook friends and sending us gifts. Yes, you can, you, we, we, will, we will support you on Facebook, but uh, the, we're, we're having a, a few issues with the Alliance where the veteran players are a little frustrated with the noobs right now. So Yeah, we're going to um, get into that, but... <laughs> I, I know, I know they're lighting a fire under your ass because you're like busting up shops <clears throat> hardcore, and I'm, I'm not a slacker. I just don't grind as hard as some of these guys where they're hitting top ten and twenty. To do that is just too much of a time commitment for me. But we'll get into that. <laughs> Once in a while, I do pull out top twenty though. Not all the time. It's FYI. Don't kick me. Don't kick me. <laughs> So anyway, closing out the news, we were talking about Halo and uh, Martin, Martin O'Donnell, uh, who uh, me, you may know, he's one of those behind the scene guys in the gaming industry who uh, does music. Uh, his, his, you may recognize mm -hmm. his work. He's done the work on uh, Halo series, uh, on the new Destiny that's coming out, Oni, Riven, and Myst. So taking it back there, Riven and Myst. PC Gaming, there you go. The, it's been on other platforms since then, but yeah, taking it back... Uh, Martin O'Donnell actually got fired, without cause, as he says, by uh, the uh, Bungie uh, board of directors. Very interesting. Uh, no, no explanation and no comment from them. But uh, moving on from that, I, I do want to share a fun fact about, about um, how, Bun how um, what, the Riven developers used to spend their free time. They used to play a game called Marathon. While they were developing uh, Riven and Mist and all that stuff, and and Marathon is like the roots. Well, actually, R Riven. Mist was much earlier. Um, 
uh, what you call it, they, this is a Mario Fight actually the game that kind of inspired Halo. So it's but, the precursor to Halo. Yeah, exactly. So and it's actually one of the few games on on an Apple platform. <laughs> That, that's probably worth saying, but uh, well, originally Halo was going to be an Apple exclusive. Yeah, can you imagine Is what it, world it would have been? <laughs> that would have been very weird to, to me, at least. But uh, eh. hey, Steam works on that on uh, Mac, and so does Hearthstone. Just just throwing it out there. Yeah. Um. Another thing that's, cool, that's neat about um, Martin O'Donnell's story is that the way he started working at Bungie was because he enjoyed this game marathon. They were just playing during their downtime while working on Riven. And he just emailed a Bungie employee, and then he got hired. It's kind of neat. You know, that kind of stuff doesn't happen these days that much, but, you know, it's kind of cooler to think about it. Anyway, moving on. They, oh, they didn't give to... a reason as to why. He just... They just I, up and, I mean, Marty O'Donnell has been with Halo... Or with Bungie forever. Yeah, and I could not find anything. None of my PR contacts had anything. I mean, all the usual sources, I couldn't find anything. I mean, I probably could have stand to dig a little deeper, but no one knew anything other than he just tweeted out, I was fired without cause. He tweeted it out, and that's it. It's very strange. I had a chance to interview him a few years ago, and... Uh, my nephew was being a pain in the ass, and we had to leave. Oh, your, your he, cameraman. He it. Yes, an asshole cameraman. I took him to uh, <laughs> the video game orchestra, and oh, nice. I had spent the I had spent the entire weekend hanging out with Tommy Tallarico and uh, Lauren Lanning. I went and had pizza with Lauren Lanning, um, and we had a chance to interview Marty O'Donnell. But he was young. The music didn't interest him. At, uh, you know, the concert wasn't all that interesting to him. And afterwards, he faked an illness, and I had to bring him home. Oh, God, so. yeah. That's terrible. I, from so. what I understand, Marty's a pretty, you know, down-to-earth guy. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. And uh, it's kind of a shame to hear this kind of thing, because even though I'm not that big on, on Halo as a game... And I, I enjoy playing it, but it's not like, you know, the best thing to, to slice bread. But I do enjoy the music. The music, I find, is kind of like, I don't know. It, it usually puts chills through me. And, and, and mm -hmm. it creates that feeling of, wow, this is an epic thing, or at least it's supposed to be. <laughs> well, did, um, have you ever, have you gone to a VG, uh, video game orchestra concert? I've heard them. Uh, uh, okay. Through, uh, yeah. It means. <laughs> if you get it. If you get a chance, and, you know, this is weird. I, I guess I should put the Skype window on my main screen here. <laughs> there we go. Because all I'm doing is looking to the side the entire time. Yeah, well, we, um, what I if, do is I put the, the, the your picture, your video, right under where the camera is at, so yeah. it looks like I'm looking at you. It helps out. Pro tip for everybody out there. <laughs> So, um, but uh, if you ever get a, ch if they're ever in the area, and if you contact their PR people, you with your show and everything, you should probably be get in there. Go and check it out. It's a lot of fun because not only do you have the music from you know Final Fantasy and Halo and Super Mario, uh, but you have lasers, you have video playing in the background, you have special effects going off. And it's it's a fun night just uh, uh, of music. So and uh, usually they do a lot of like additional events surrounding the thing. Like uh, when I saw it, it was at Yale, and they had a couple of symposiums and uh, that I was able to go to and uh, you know listen to Tommy and Lauren and a couple other people talk about gaming and what they expected gaming to be in the future which and it was just you know it was a great time so yeah you, if you, you get a chance definitely check it out that's a good recommendation and they're usually yeah. reasonable well yeah i definitely would recommend that cause from what i've seen definitely is my kind of thing i mean i, I like sometimes i enjoy just downloading uh, osts for like video games and stuff or mm -hmm. reimaginings of the song <laughs> Shout out Fel Fel Felicia Day and what we did, but 
um, they have a, a, the, this one channel, this one show where they, they do reinterpretations of uh, bit games, and this girl uses an, an electric guitar, uh, not guitar, electric violin. But a violin, yep. It's pretty crazy. I mean, they use all the, they have all the synth stuff and going on. It's crazy. They, they, they do a really good job. And I, every time I, I, I listen to the, the their, um, you know, like kind of like reimaginings of the songs, I, I get chills through that too. Like, and I, get, I get all nostalgic, and I'm like, damn, I'm old. <laughs> well, Microsoft actually brought her out on stage at an E3, probably for Halo Three, if I'm remembering right. And they had her uh, doing like the Halo theme song on the electric violin, and it was yeah, yeah. pretty freaking amazing. Yeah, she's good. She's good. She freaking yeah. rips on that thing like it's, like it's an electric guitar. <laughs> so anyway, we're almost done here with the news. Uh, we, we, last week we reported on episode 19 that uh, Hearthstone's doing these fireside gatherings, and uh, Stan, our own Stan Farina reported that it, they've been mostly a flop. This, they were supposed to do these for an extended period. Hopefully they do. But basically the idea is that anyone can host a meetup and Blizzard will list the location of the meetup and people can bring out their iPads or if they want their computers, if they can actually get hookups. And then uh, play Hearthstone together and use the player near, near me option to play with people in the area. And then if you do three matches like that, if you play with three people on your subnet, basically the same wireless network or the same LAN, then you get a uh, limited edition card back, kind of like you do when you play ranked play. So it's kind of neat. I hope they keep that up because it's a good viral yeah. agent. Obi, what, what, what you got on that? I got one. What's that? I have people come over to my house all the time and play Hearthstone on my network. Yeah. Well, dude, if you do three people at the same time, you should do it. Uh, yeah, I got one more coming over. I got one more coming over tomorrow. We're actually going to do it. We're going to play some Hearthstone. So, so you get, get contact yeah, Blizzard. You, uh, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll try to put it on uh, stream, too, maybe. We'll dude, you've got to make an event out of this. We'll, I'll pimp the hell out Definitely, of it. Definitely, man. And I know everybody else will. Because uh, Blizzard puts you on, on their directory, and, and you can call it Casa Obi if you want. You know? They don't care, and then they put it on there. They see the time and location. Dude, exactly. You see what I'm going with this. No, I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell not, you that I'm thinking about this. Yeah, <laughs> but it's kind of cool though, cause I, I mean, I know that, that they could probably stand to give people more support and help with the whole thing and organizing it. But you know, they already give you like some, like, like a little cheat sheet, like a little handbook on how to set up your your meetups. And some people say, oh well, it's kind of lame that these companies are using the you know consumer to market their stuff. Well, that's what everyone's doing, so. What can you do? That's what Facebook is. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, that's what Twitter, that's what Facebook. I mean, you know, I do the album of the day. Exactly. You You're know, not getting things like that. that. We share things that no. we love. You know, we share things that we yeah. love. And there's a, it's a mutual benefit because you get to meet like-minded people that way. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I enjoy your album of the day. I don't always get to comment on it, but I check it out. And sometimes I stop and, and, and look at it briefly. And I'm like, oh, I love that album. And sometimes I look at it and I'm like, what the hell is he talking about? <laughs> Oh, you'll find out that I'm a big uh, blues fan very quickly. See, I like all kind of music. Yeah, we could talk. We could talk about this. See, we have very eclectic yeah. taste. But uh, so a big quick shout out to everybody that's in the chat. We're gonna try to keep things moving along. We do have a lot to cover. Um, and we're gonna, again, again, we're gonna talk about Marvel Puzzle Quest and uh, ask Chip how he's become such a ninja in the game without uh, getting a heart attack. <laughs> Yeah, and Obi's gonna beg him to join him every second of every chance I can on this show. Exactly, and and, and then Obi and I will talk about Hearthstone, something we're a little more well versed yep. in. And, and yeah, you got you guys can help me with that because I'm failing miserably at Hearthstone, but I think I've come to a couple of conclusions. We we talked Hearthstone <laughs> for probably twenty minutes on our show tonight as well. Oh, I'm looking forward. Yeah, to I'm I, sorry. I, I don't. It. I don't. I don't. I don't train noobs. Sorry. <laughs> oh, oh. Obi, don't hey, don't at, feed the trolls. <laughs> oh, hey, noob, at, at, noob, 20, hey, at twenty. Chip, bucks. I'll make you a deal. Yeah. I'll make you a deal. Noob for a noob, man. I'll help uh, you. Is if you take me on, take me under your wing. I won't be a noob. I, 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 I will help you, you as much as I can. I ha unfortunately, first of all, it's twenty dollars per alliance slot right now for me to add somebody and uh but i 
I will gift you. I will help you with. Uh, I I mean. I'm I'm in it because I enjoy it, but mm-hmm. we have a lot of people that are starting to get a little uh, frustrated that we're not breaking the top fifty uh, in the tournaments. And it, and I did a quick analysis of uh, our members the uh, la- last night. You saw that Yogi, right? Yep. Where uh, the top the the top performers are uh, averaging. Somewhere around a thousand to fifteen hundred points per alliance member, and we're at five hundred. Yeah, and there's a bunch of people that are, you know, busting their ass in our alliance that are getting nine hundred and getting a little frustrated that some people aren't pulling their weight. And it's like it's not that type of alliance. Yeah, we want to do well, but (laughs) so. Right now, I have to, you know, as the captain, I got to quell the mutiny. And yep. then I can bring in some more, uh, oh, oh. Been more there. noobs. Been, I accept that. Been there, done now, that. Obi, of- Obi knows what's up, too. Because uh, mm-hmm. we both have been involved in, many, in gaming clans and have ran gaming clans. Mm-hmm. And I have one that I've been running that is more of a social group than anything else. Since like the '90s, and we, yep, we still have the so same things. core group. Yep, same group, core group of people that we just get together for local mm-hmm. meetups, for tabletop stuff, or we get together on Xbox or PC, whatever. And you know, we're just very casual. It's kind of you have to find a sweet spot where you're competitive, yep. but not to the point where it becomes a lifestyle. Because I don't know about you guys, but I can't commit to one single game 24/7. That's not my definition of fun. That sounds like an MMO to me. I'm mm-hmm. different. See, I can. Yeah, but on the other hand, I played WoW for how many years? Um, you know, but that's, uh, that's shit, why you go dark. I want to tell so you. Long. <laughs> yeah, I did go dark. That's why everybody's asking me, "Am I going to play the next expansion?" Nope. Anyway, Chip, instead of me training you on Hearthstone, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up a couple of games, give you my wife's name on on battle. And let her teach you how to play Hearthstone. I guarantee you'll be beating my ass in a week. <laughs> Deal? We can we can work on and that. I, yeah. And then and I'll bust my butt with the Marvel uh, the Mar- and she'll probably be playing that too. And she'll probably you'll want her on your team. I'm going to you right now. Um, but we'll we'll we'll. That's an even trade off, I think. Yep. Yeah. And I, I Before, one of the things I want to do tonight is give tips for noobs. Because there are some pitfalls if you fall into, that you can fall into very quickly that will cost you um, down the road. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Well, before we before we forget, we do see lots and tons of sharing and lurking on Geeky Antics content. What we want to do is we want to say we appreciate everybody's support. We really thank you a lot with what we're trying to do, um, and now acquiring Death Gaming Podcast and just. It just we're we're doing it, guys. So, so we really want to appreciate, and we want to show, we want to express the that we love you guys very much, and we really appreciate it. So you know, I know that's I don't know if Yogi wanted to say that or whatever he wanted to do, but I'm sure he'll take this next one though. You ready for what, it? Will I? Yeah. Go ahead. You ready for it? Go ahead. Ah, quickie, the real next gen. What is it, Yogi? Just what, before we go to the main event, I just want to share a quick kind of rant and see where you guys are at with this and encourage some uh, feedback from the community. Wherever, where, wherever you listen to us, whether it's on All Games or Geeky Antics, Stitcher, Zoom, iTunes, wherever, we, we're encur- we encourage you to call in on, and, and comment on any of the things that we discuss and keep the conversation going. That number is 206-415-4987. But the real next gen, and it's a question mark, because, you know, I have a lot of mixed feelings here, and I know I'm not the only one, because I've heard Chip's show, and, you know, the B-Team podcast, you hear next gen thrown around a lot, and and I think mm-hmm. it's it's a hot button topic, because the root issue here is about our expectations as gamers, right? Now, I've got lots of crap about not having, uh, not playing a lot of next-gen games, and not only a next-gen console. And I, and I tell people, and I, and I don't want to be an elitist, but I'm like, I got one already. It's called the, my PC. 
Because I'm playing newer stuff and more fun stuff right now on the PC than I, I see on the Xbox One or the PS4, and that's just me. Nothing on the consoles right now is is going to make me pull the trigger. The only thing that I feel bad about is that I don't get to play games online with my friends when they set up Titanfall matches and, you know, and whatnot. But, I mean... You're not missing much on Titanfall. Yeah, I know. I know. And, I, I mean, I've played it, and, and it's cool, but I think... Like a lot of things on the console, it's a flavor of the moment. It's like it's good because right now it's the only it's the it's the coke in the desert, you know. You're thirsty. It's the only yeah. <laughs> it's, the only, it's the only thing. It's the only thing on there right now. Yeah, but you, tell me, you know, what do you guys think? Do you think we're expecting too much from the next gen, or maybe, or maybe we're just too jaded? I'm gonna let Chip go first because uh, be right back. Uh, his yeah, turn to choke. No. <laughs> um, well, you know, I was against uh, this generation coming out when it did as it was because I was still per- perfectly happy with my uh, 360 and my PS3. I mean, you yep. look at games like Bioshock Infinite, you look at games like uh, The Last of Us, you know, those were absolutely spectacular games that showed there was still a lot uh, left in the tank. You might be near the top of the tank, but, uh, you know, there was still something left. And, you know, so far, and you you know we've talked about it on our show, it's like, look, we were promised flying cars. I don't see them yet <laughs> after the, their respective uh, press conferences, just to say, all right, I have my place in line. Um, and, uh, you know, I have them both, and I just, it's just like... Me, I know. Uh, do the games look better? Yeah, of course they look better. Do they play any better? Well, the few games that are actually out for these systems, no, not really. I mean, a first-person shooter is a first-person shooter. Yep. You've had some bells and whistles. But see, that's, um, the, that's the thing. Know. I just feel like, like. Yeah. You know, before it used to be a big thing when we took the leap from 4-bit to 8-bit to 16-bit to 32-bit. Yep. Not so much because the graphics were better, but it was a significant change in, in the um, amount of possibilities that opened up for the developer. Mm-hmm. Their, their creativity was no longer limited. But that, that's that been the case, like I would say, for for like two generations already. The, the people have a lot of power to take advantage of. For a long time already, or at least with the 360 and PS3, they've had that power. They just haven't done anything fresh with it, you know. And some people say, "Well, when you ask for new ideas and it comes out, it tanks." Well, that's because that they're, they're they're not handling it the right way, you know. They make all this hoopla about these uh, regurgitated games, but then the things that really need our attention get no kind of mention. There's no viral campaign or nothing, and they just kind of go under the radar, right? What do you think, Chip? Um, <clears throat> I'm collecting my rewards for the simulator. What's well, so um, out of your head? So I figured you had a lot of stuff to say on that. Well, no, I'm and I, I and I'm agreeing with you because, uh, well, I think there's you know a okay. It takes a little while to get your head around the hardware and learn how to to make this new instrument play music and you know so you know being an early adopter uh for every generation of console um i'm kind of used to this it's going to take a year before people get their sea legs and are able to do something with these things um but at the same time where do we go and when you do something innovative uh People, people respond negatively most of the time. It's not what they're used to. So unless it's something mind-blowing and you can get the hype train behind it, uh, it's going to be uh, lost in a sea of Call of Duty clones. <laughs> That's definitely very accurate. And I love what you said about... The games are not playing any differently. I think that's a big thing. The core mechanics have not been changed. Mm-hmm. The the even little features they could do to enhance the online experience on the console. The simple things that people that are not even game designers see as an opportunity. They're not doing these things. Um, 
it, it, it feels like for as much as they've brought on, the online experience and game experiences to the masses, it, it still feels very sharded and kind of patchworked. Right? There's so many things they can improve beyond just giving us a few extra polygons. And to me, I feel like the indie games, you know, not the big studio releases, they're the real, they're, the real, they're exemplifying a true next-gen experience. And they're doing better now. P people are responding more and more to them, at least on the PC. On the console, it's, it's, a, it's a tougher sell. Because people, they're paying all this money for the console, the dedicated machine for gaming. They want to push the envelope on the power. They basically want these technolo technological showcases, right? But the indie games, I'm seeing so many fun things that I really enjoy, and I promote the hell out of them. Like, FTL, I think, is one of the best games I've ever played, even though it doesn't look that impressive when you look at it, you know? Well, and I think, you know, this kind of goes back to what we were seeing at PAX, and one of our big complaints was... <clears throat> You know, the tri there were one or two AAA games there, or quote-unquote AAA games. Uh, the jury's still out on most of those. Uh, but uh, there was tons of indie stuff. But separating the signal from the noise was ridiculous because there were, you know, let's say 200 indie games there. Hmm. And 150 of them were all uh, iterations on something we've already seen. There were only a handful that were original. And then out of that, there was only a few that uh, were actually interesting or fun to play. Yeah. And uh, you, that that was where I think our disappointment with PAX was because we were seeing a lot of Me Too crap. Yeah, and uh, you know the rare gems were uh, very hard to find this year. So, yeah, um, and that and that's PC, Yogi. That's PC. That's iPad. But we'll add one or two extra things, you know, or we'll make it a little bigger or better. Um, that's kind of unavoidable. That's unfortunate when that happens, and. Obviously, with indie games, we have uh, accelerated the release schedule, so we're getting overwhelmed with more content at a faster rate, and it's like, whoa. But, you know, the big studio releases are still, you know, they've slowed down finally. I'm actually happy for that. It's for a little while, it was like, you know, there were like 10 or 15 major releases coming out any given week, and it was just like, crap, I can't keep up with this stuff. You know, you you, you That's called November. Yeah, exactly. For seriously, and it's like, you know, you, you may get all these games, but really, how much are you going to play them? You know, I get a lot of replay value right. out of these, you know, the, the simpler games a lot of the times, uh, and the indie games, and the retro style games, I get a lot of more replay value out of them, but... Yeah, go ahead, Obi, you, do you want to say something? Ugh. Before I, uh, I go crazy? No, no, keep going. Keep going, I'm looking in chat, and, and Stan Ferrara was talking... The question would actually be, for you guys, is... What would a next gen game be like? A good one, then. So yeah, he's, he's, I've been asking that on the B team for the last two months. <laughs> I, uh, what I, is uh, what is a next gen game? Yeah, and that's kind of what that's we're asking. New. Next generation. That's kind of what we're asking now Maybe. too. I mean, I would like to see some new genres being explored. Something other than FPS games. Uh, something other than you know, uh, um, you know, kill people. You know, I run around with guns. I mean, that's cool. But, and, you know, th there's a lot of things people have not been exploring with co-op opportunities. And people that usually don't like PvP will at least play co-op and they still get that, that, that fun you get out of a multiplayer experience without the caustic community, right? Because you get to some play with type of, right. Some type of persistent world, massively multiplayer game, I think, is where you have to start for next gen. Um, you know, you can ramp up the graphics, um, I don't know, may maybe better AI in hmm. uh, NPCs yes. or computer-controlled characters, uh, more complicated scenarios, uh, multiple, you know, the multiple ending things, there was a panel I went to a few years ago at, uh, it was at PAX East. And it was uh, for this 
this great game. I can't remember the name of it. It was basically uh, an RPG CIA spy type game, and it was out on the 360 and the the PS3, and it got fair reviews, which I actually really enjoyed the hell out of it. Oh, we lo- I did this. Uh, we lost your audio there briefly, Chip. What did you say? Um, I bet I'm back. Yes, yes. You were saying something okay. about a game on the PC that had uh, no, was, branching storylines? Yes, it was on branching storylines. It was a RPG uh, that was a spy RPG, and I can't remember the name of the game right now. Uh, it got fair reviews. I actually thought it was a lot more fun than the reviews kind of made it out to be. Mm. But uh, the developer discussed uh choice mm-hmm. and you know how it branches out and he says you know uh when you look at 8-bit games there was two answers and they both re- uh would net the same result back in uh the original 8-bit games now he goes and then he goes here's the tree for our game and you know it was this gigantic uh flow chart uh, showing a bajillion different uh, outcomes and endings uh, depending on what you did. I like and, that. Uh, kind of like what Mass Effect was supposed to be. <laughs> hmm? Yes. Kind of like what Mass Effect... I mean, Mass Effect did have a good closure as far as the character development and, and the different ways those, the story, those individual storylines went. But then the ultimate ending, right. it didn't feel like anything you did really made a difference. It was kind of like Bioshock Infinite, that feeling of, you know... Difference, your choices have no no bearing on your destiny, you know that pre prede- yes. predeterminism. But Chip, I gotta stop you for real quick because I love what you said about AI. That is one of my favorite parts in game design. I've I and I used when I used to be into the game development pretty heavily. I, I used to love writing AI algorithms because getting that fuzzy logic and finding ways to create uh, an NPC or some some kind of entity that feels like they're human, but you know they're not. Why aren't people exploring that more? Like having, you know, like in, in the Resident Evil games, having an AI partner that isn't an idiot and isn't dying every, like, you know, 20 seconds and you have to heal them, you know? that That's the kind of stuff we need to see to really say this is the next gen. I could give two shits about freaking virtual reality and extra polygons. We're past that. I, everything you said is on point. With the AI, uh, I love choice because choice and, and deep customization, is it, those are contributing factors to replay value and immersion. And immersion to the point where you get lost in the experience and you're like, I don't want to be anywhere else. I'm, I'm, I'm in this and that's it. That's, that's definitely he, he, the next gen. Here's the definition of next gen. An escort mission that's actually fun. <laughs> well, the, well, well played, once sir. you do that, I think, I think we, we, the next generation will have arrived. Or, or I'll add to that, espionage that's actually fun. Not just listening to someone or, or walking behind them, like making it like you really feel like you're a spy and it's fun, not just mundane crap. So anyway, so let's get out to the main event, our feature, which uh. we t- we've titled Solving the Strategy Puzzle. And we set the stage because we, we're talking about how a lot, a lot of times these simple games are more fun for us and more mm-hmm. immersive than these big budget games. And it's why we find ourselves playing games like League of Legends, Arma 2, which right now is kind of old when you look at the tech, but it's still fun. And it's still coming out with mods, you know, and, and, and extra content for it. League of Legends, you know, it's a simple game on the surface, but we're immersed in it. Hearthstone, Marvel Puzzle Quest, we go on. I mean, and also, one of uh, Chip and um, my, my uh, favorite games of all time, Hers Like Why. Just want to put that out there. Okay. <laughs> That's a yeah. Strange. I love that game. I sub- we played that in college, and uh, uh, my roommate and I, uh, if he won, he would uh, play uh, Queens, We Are the Champions. And if I won, then I would play for him, Ray Charles is uh, Born to Lose. So, uh, <laughs> nice. But, you he, know. Uh, is, yeah, that, that was just... That that was fantastic gaming on the Genesis. Yeah, and it still holds up pretty well today. 
Um, I, I still recommend that people check out Air Mac, the company yep. that makes that game, Carbon mm-hmm. Games. They're good. They're good people. They've got. They've hooked me up with review copies of the game a long time ago, and I gave away keys and everything. They're really cool. And they captured the spirit of hers like his wife, but they gave it the facelift so more people can enjoy it. Because, you know, graphic snobs, they're like, ugh, this looks terrible. Yeah, I think I grabbed that over on the Google Play Store uh, a couple of years ago. And while I liked it, I, the controls just, you know, until you can put it on a on a joystick for me, it's got yeah, a game pad. I'll pass. It's got game, su- yeah. game pad support. Well, it probably does now. I mean, like yeah. I said, I played it. A couple of years ago. It's really slick and responsive. They're still having some issues with the server load and, and some lag. But uh, you should check it out because it's cross-platform. It's on Steam. It's, it's still free to play. Actually, now it's free to play. And uh, yeah. it's good. It's good, dude. And you can play against bots, too. So, um, All right. So we're going to talk about Marvel Puzzle Quest. Um, so just a quick few a few quick points to kind of recap what we've been ta- leading up to this whole point. I think we can all agree that we're kind of on uh, a a, um, a shooter kind of burnout, and big studio burnout right now. You know, we've kind of hit that that hit upon that point. Um, and and also I think we should you know set the stage further for Marvel Puzzle Quest and Hearthstone. Just because the game is simple on the surface does not mean the gameplay is easy or shallow. As we know, as we will see with Marvel Puzzle Quest, it is a deceptively simple game because there's actually layers to that thing, like an onion, man. It's crazy. Um, you know, and, and, and the thing as we go through this that we should all ask ourselves is what what is it that makes strategy games so satis- so satisfying for us? Because I would consider Marvel Puzzle Quest a strategy game. Because you, you have to be cognizant of the things that are behind working behind the scenes. You can play it willy-nilly, you're not going to get very far. You have to understand team compositions and counters and all kinds of stuff. You have to have a game plan. And I like, I like that part a lot. Um, another concept that I'd like everybody to think about is when you look at a game, especially a strategy game, how much of it is skill versus luck, you know, versus uh, pay to win or, you know, fast tracking. <laughs> you know, how can you tip the scale in, uh, to, in your favor, basically? And uh, we, we talk about this over on our site, geekyantics.net. But, uh, okay, Chip, I know you're foaming at the mouth. Give us some uh, Marvel uh, Puzzle Quest uh, strategies. First of all... All right. The, well, well, let's... let's way... try... go, ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Well, let's, uh, let's at least... Uh... Uh, describe the game for those that don't know what it is. Okay. And uh, yeah, just a quick plug. I did a interview with D- uh, Demiurge uh, about the game at PAX East. You can go see the video on uh, the BTeamPodcast dot com. And we did it, like I said, a twenty minute interview with questions from our Alliance members in Facebook. Um, but that didn't really get into the strategy of the game. This is a match three game. The idea being you have a team of three Marvel heroes and you are pitting them against another team of three Marvel heroes. Uh, these heroes are either, uh, if you're playing a, uh, one of the PVE events, are a team put together by the computer if it's player versus player, it's asynchronous multiplayer. Uh, you're not actually playing in real time against somebody like you would be in Hearthstone. This is their team of three uh, that the computer is playing for them versus your team of three, which you're playing live. Um, the idea is match three or more of the same color together, either horizontally or vertically. Um if you get certain combos uh, of of five or four, it has additional benefits on the screen. By ma- matching various colors, you build up attack points in that color. And if your hero and your hero has abilities, and you as- you spend these attack points to use their various abilities to take out the other uh, team's characters. That the game in je- uh, in a nutshell. Yogi. Yeah, I think that covers everything, and I think what makes it more than just a match three is the fact that mm-hmm. the abilities make you play a pu- the yeah. puzzle board completely different. Because 
You either f have to think about starving your opponent so they don't get the tiles they need to do something really painful to you. <laughs> or you think about the, t the color tiles you need, the matches you need to do something really cool yourself. And, right. you know, as you're going to, I know you're going to get into, the, when you start thinking about all the different team compositions and how there's synergies between different people that you may not think would otherwise work. Like, you know, mm. bad guy villains working with heroes, you know, and you find ways to, like, kind of break the meta and make them do vicious things. Like, we were talking about, uh, you know, combining Storm with, like, um, uh, Black Widow and a cycle that happens where they just keep stealing all your your tiles away mm -hmm. and you can't do crap because it's just like an endless loop once they get it off. You know, stuff like that. <laughs> this could be really right. game-breaking. Um, yeah, and I've actually... That's why the the sto the single star storm character is still a pretty good character to have, yeah. Um, because somebody has found that, and I've been running into that uh, combination quite a bit lately. Um, what? Uh, yes, I think I, I think uh, the the joy of the game is well. First of all, a lot of times it will force you into using or limiting what characters you can use which causes you to have to come up with new strategies and combos uh to beat uh the other team uh wh which i think is part of why i enjoy this game so much is because they keep adding additional characters and now you have different dynamics that you can work with and build slowly uh the other thing being uh some uh, you know an obsessive compulsive i need all the characters i need to max them all and you are always in the quest for additional covers you can only level a character uh so far until you get additional covers uh for that character each character can have up to 13 covers on them and and um one star max out at 50 two star max out at 85 and uh, three star max out at 141 there are some four star characters we don't have to really worry about those they're very rare um and pretty useless agreed um those are more so, collectibles right now than anything else, right? Yeah, that that that's that's your e penis. That's all it is. Yeah. You know. Um, so at this point, uh, the I, so I once you start getting into that, and once you build up a, a decent roster and can start working out various combos, uh, that's where the game really takes on its uh, a a new focus. At first, I think you're just surviving and probably playing through the prologue missions and grinding and building up your initial characters is a great place to start. Uh, then you start adding in the two-star and the three-star characters as you randomly pick up some of these cards, and then you start seeing new ideas and new possibilities on how to combine characters, and I think that's where it gets pretty addictive. Um... What I tell everybody who starts playing the game is if you have, if you get any hero coins at the beginning of the game or earn them in the game, immediately just throw them into roster spots. Do never buy revives, never buy a lock, and never buy a random card. Yep. You will get, you will get plenty of cards through various drops your Facebook friends, you will get plenty of ISO, which is what you use to level characters. Uh, there is no reason for you to waste money on revives. Just have some patience. Your characters will revive. Yeah. Um, you, there is no reason for you to buy a lock. And uh, take, because there are right now, I think, what, 39 characters available? Yeah, 39. Um, and that'll yeah. make it 40, and yeah. the new Dakin will make it 41. Oh. We're doing a three-star Dakin. Yeah, um, and Dakin is, a, is another one that's pretty underrated, because he has a lot of staying power. Like, with him... Well, yeah, like he's got durability. I, I've, never, I've never leveled him. Well, I... 
you know, I've never really used him or leveled him to something useful. Well, see, I have him maxed out, and what I do is I run him with mm-hmm. people with a team that he does has a lot of green and red abilities, mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. then what happens is he might tank the damage from the enemies, and if he's just taking mm-hmm. basic attack damage, even from high level, mm-hmm. you know, one forty ones or whatever, uh, three mm-hmm. stars or four stars, he's he's he he can recover from those attacks as long as you keep your opponent starved mm-hmm. from being able to get the big moves out. He can recover because mm-hmm. he get that that uh. He, he's like the the old Wolverine used to be. Remember when he used to like heal every turn? Now they got rid of that. Yeah. And it's only when he's at yep. 50% or less you got to get a yellow match. And, you know, for right. people that have been around the game, they, they might be nostalgic about that. But that is actually pretty good. He's, he's a tank. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, um, what you guys are, and what you guys are saying about this real quick, I mean, sorry, I just want to chime in mm-hmm. here for a second. What you guys are saying about this, it actually does sound kind of interesting. I've been looking at it on the other screen over here. Um, it's almost, it's almost like Candy Crush. It looks like it. <laughs> it is, but it's Candy Crush for smart people. Yeah. Oh, then I'm nef- definitely not going to play it then. <laughs> the, 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 you know, I played Candy Crush for six months. I got up to level four ten or four twenty, something like that. Um, so I mean, I was a. Uh, I was a big fan of that. Where this gets interesting is you're actually battling other people. Mm -hmm. uh, And just, you know, the different abilities certainly uh, brings new dynamics to it. But, uh, yeah, my first tip is, uh, you know, just take any hero coins you get and just buy roster spots. Because they get expensive very fast. And I know people who have dropped out of the game because... Well, you know, I I can't I don't have enough hero coins to add this character. Yeah. Um so, well, first of all, if you're enjoying the game, there's no reason why you can't drop 5 bucks and pick up 600 hero coins and that'll get you a few more roster spots. Yep. Uh you will eventually be earning enough uh hero coins where uh I don't know if you'll be able to afford, you know, I mean, right now another roster spot for me is something like 500 hero coins. But um, you can certainly earn a decent amount of hero coins once you start leveling up your characters. And, you know, if you enjoy a game like this, if you enjoy a game like Hearthstone, uh, you know, these guys don't work for free. There's, you know... This is what they're doing. To put, they made this game uh, in order to make money to put food on the table for their people. If you enjoy the game, support the game, uh, and you know, even if you give them five bucks every two months, you know that's cool. If you're still playing the game and you're still enjoying it, you should do something like that. Um, mm-hmm. ne- never buy ISO. <laughs> if you're going <laughs> to spend money on the game, just just buy hero coins. Yeah. Um, and then, like I said, uh, you know, I, I've seen people say, well, you know, I'm thinking of dropping this character or that character. Well, if you've spent all that ISO and you've uh, gone through all the uh, pain of leveling that character up, there's no way I would ever drop it. And there are certain events where they require some of the more underpowered or obscure characters and force you to play with them. So, I, you know, and I just see it as another option uh, when, I, when I'm playing the game. I know my... Uh, this opponent that has, a, you know, level one characters. Let me use some of my scrubs and save uh, the big guns for later. Um, mm-hmm. So, you know, I, I personally will, you know, if for some reason I was l- that low on hero coins, and I will be shortly, um, and if I got another character that I need, uh, if a new new character was released and I got him, I would have no problem dropping five, six bucks to get enough hero coins to open a slot for him. Mm-hmm. Um <clears throat> Because that usually means they're going to be featured in uh, the next event or something. Yeah. Uh, I don't have your show notes open here, Yogi. Um, well, do you quick, have any other tips for noobs, Yogi? 
Yeah, I think that, you know, we've talked about this before. When, like I said, last time you were on the show, we talked about this. You know, as far as the free-to-play game, there's a lot of bitterness about, mm-hmm. oh, I don't want to have to pay money. It's supposed to be free-to-play. Well, I'm I'm in between. I agree. These are how they, they have to make the money somehow. It's free to play because mm-hmm. they want you to try it out and see if you like it before you spend money. And then you tip mm-hmm. them. It's like tipping any anyone in any kind of mm-hmm. service. Mm-hmm. But um, what I like about Marvel Puzzle Quest is that you don't have to spend that money if you play it smart. But you get to a point where you want to because you're thoroughly enjoying it. And you're not just being mm-hmm. slammed in the face with a paywall like that prevents you. It's not a forced obstacle you know where it's like you can only progress if you spend this much money it's not like that at all if you play smart you know like just like you suggested save your hero coins i did that from day one i never used hero coins for anything other than opening up slots because i knew they were going to be few and far in between they've gotten better about that too because now the torn all the events are giving lots of hero coins and iso and covers it's actually a really good time to come on because during the when it was a close when it was the preview edition you know kind of like the open beta kind of thing going on that the, they, they barely gave out like good rewards it was kind of scarce and the only thing you could really do back then was play the kind of campaign but now they have so many opportunities between the lightning rounds and the different pvp events it's just a great time and the alliance thing is even more fun because now you have other people working in tandem to do the same thing and, and you you encourage each other a lot mm-hmm. now the negative thing about it as you mentioned before, Chip, is that you get the people that are really competitive, and this might be the only game they play, so they have that expectation, you have to be top 10 or top 20, you know, and I personally don't see how that's possible. I've gotten top 10, top 20 a few times, very few times, I can probably count on one hand how many times I've done it, and it was a lot of work. What kind of time the, investment the thing would it, it be? Hmm? What kind of time investment should people expect to get to that I, level of competition? <laughs> where it's still, you know, where it could still be fun. Wait for it. Wait. Oh, uh, I'm. Um, you probably are. I mean, it's it's going to take you a while, a to get the good characters. Uh, I would say it's going to probably take you a good, and you know, you're building up that those characters. And, you know, eventually you make the top 100 and the top 50. You know, you were talking about making the, uh, how well you were doing. Last week, I was, I think it was last week's Punisher event. Um, yeah, what well, I think the Punisher event was last week. Um, I uh, busted ass on Friday, and I locked in uh, my score of 1,100. Guy in first place was at 1300 I was getting hammered because as you get higher up there, uh, they start throwing you out to every player to try and a- a- yep. attack you. Yep. And basically, I was, it was getting to the point where I was, I was losing more points than I was winning because I was getting attacked so quickly. So I finally broke 1100 and immediately uh, locked down and, you know, which does cost hero coins, but I was like, I got six hours to go. I'm just going to lock at 1100, and you know, we'll we'll see what happens. If I need to jump in in the last half hour uh, because I'm close to the two spot or the one or two spot, fine. Uh, but uh, I don't know what the hell happened. With less than one minute to go, I was ahead. I was in second place with the guy behind me. The guy behind me was at least 50 points uh, behind me. Uh, the match ended. The results came in about 15 minutes later, and somehow I had dropped from set two to the top five. I don't know what the hell. I, I was pretty pissed about that. <laughs> oh, yeah, dude. You, you freaking blink an eye, and you dropped down several places. It's crazy. But I, but I was locked. I mean, if I, if I wasn't locked, yes. Oh, right, but there was yeah, nobody that's... with it. You know, and the other guy that was trying to cut, take take over actually lost uh, his last match in the last five minutes because I was sitting there monitoring it <laughs> and, uh, you know, watching where his place was going. And it's like, okay, I have him by 50 points with one minute, with less than a minute to go. There's no way he can overtake me. 
so I don't know what the hell happened. But, um, you know, but yes, I think that's part of the mystique of the game is as you start playing, uh, you know, you're not, you're going to get your ass kicked, uh, while while you're leveling up but you're going to have that progression where uh now you're getting a two-star character and now you've built your wolverine from level six up to level 25 and he's doing a lot more and well now i got another card for him that adds another ability or enhances uh one of his previous abilities and now he's becoming a real kick-ass character uh so i think that's you know that that's what i think is the mystique of the game, but I think it's going to take you some time to get there. Um, I'm looking at our uh, show notes here. Leveling up with minimal, minimal grinding. Um, one of the, so I was. This was something that one of uh, our uh, alliance members was asking. How, how, how do I get the levels up quickly? Um, the best thing to do is hit one of the versus events within the uh, within uh, the first few minutes that it starts because you can get uh you will get uh matches against some very very low characters so it'll be the yeah. featured character and the other two members of his team will be level 1 and you and yep. <laughs> you so you can get 100 iso uh, are 100 points in the tournament very quickly and probably rack up six or 700 uh, ISO uh, within, that, within that time period. And 200 isn't a stretch in, in these instances. And uh, at the same time, not only are you getting ISO, you're earning uh, additional covers, additional boosters. So it's an, it's an easy way to get more characters and get the uh, ISO you need to level them up. I think that's the easiest way, wouldn't you say, uh, Yogi? Yeah, I like, I like doing the lightning rounds because, like you said, uh, yep. that you get less rewards when you fight those lower-level teams, the newbie teams, but you could do it much faster, and it ends up being better than fighting the guys that are much tougher and they might give slightly more rewards but you're getting beat up and you're getting less of a of a run because your guys are all exhausted or dead so it's better to just kind of pick on the newbies a bit the low bees a bit and get those rewards pick pick on the noobs speak when and you're not really getting all that much more for the bigger guys not not, not yeah. the first couple uh, pretty much uh, the first battle is 25 points or yep. twenty, you know, it's somewhere between twenty-five and thirty points. Take the points and take the ISO and uh, do, and that's and just do that. And like I said, in ten fifteen minutes, you'll have a, uh, you'll be at a hundred points in the tournament, and you'll have gotten three rewards plus you'll have played probably four battles and racked up, you know, six seven hundred uh, ISO probably. Um, I think that's what point whoring was as well. So yeah, somebody, I wonder where you're going with that. <laughs> somebody reworded my, my stuff on me. <laughs> well, yeah, you actually put point whoring, and I was, and I put, but is it really? Because I don't know what you were trying to go for yeah. for that. Because I I was thinking like you know just like grinding and then being you know kind of sitting in the corner, mine. <laughs> And, you know, uh, and I don't know how you do it, and I think this is one of the things I was going to ask you, Obi, because i talked to a couple of people who have different theories on leveling up. Uh, what are you doing? Are you doing a scattershot approach of leveling everybody at the same time? You focusing on characters? And I'm pulling um, up your... Uh, I'm going to pull up your roster. It's based... Wait, what? I'm pulling up Yogi's roster. Yeah, oh, you, you, me. yeah you actually asked OB what she's doing. What, what are you doing with oh, the characters, OB? Oh, sorry. <laughs> um, I'm uh, making sure that this guy is in this position and, um, yeah. yeah, playing that one spider guy and then uh, <laughs> and then playing that one guy that has the big tongue and it goes like that. So, yeah. Um, that's that's yeah. good. You got to keep it up. Am I doing it right? 
<laughs> you're doing it wrong. Like, Yogi, what, what, oh, what, it looks like uh, you're working on maxing out all your characters. Yeah, what I do, it, it's very situational. Um, mm. There's certain, there's a, there's a few guys that I have dog-eared as, like, I know they're go-to guys. But um, depending where I'm at during an event, like, let's say my top guys are taken out, and I see someone that could be a good player, I start investing in, you know, the ISO and them, so they could be more mm -hmm. serviceable for that scenario, especially if they have a boost for that scenario, and they get the extra mm -hmm. HP and damage, or if they're just good for that kind of objective. Like, for example, we talked about this part, too, where if there's uh, a lot of special tiles that the enemy team is using, um, you might want to have some removal or something where, like, Moonstone has, where she could take over the enemy's uh, tiles and make it a, a friendly tile, right? So you end up healing your team or doing or taking their bomb and using it against them, right? Um, mm -hmm. Or or um, uh, Black Wid Widow, the the evil version of her, I forget her name, Yel Yelena. She's got the whole thing where she could turn the special tiles into critical tiles, and it's actually very effective. Uh, the thing is, she doesn't have she doesn't have much durability. So yeah, I look at the situations and I kind of scatter shot it, like you said. But I do have a few mm -hmm. guys that like I'm working on, like Aries. I'm pretty close to, to maxing. I like him a lot because uh, he's got the he's got a lot of burst damage. He's got the uh, self heal ability, kind of <laughs> he, like the little suicide attack he does. And then he also has the attack that attacks the entire enemy team. So I kind of like having that. Flexibility, kind of like Storm. Storm could do single target damage, or she could do target damage to the whole team, enemy team. You know, but unfortunately, she's also not very durable, but she's very powerful. So, look, looking at your team, the one you should focus right now on, Fishnet Widow. Yeah, I thought I had the original. What? Really... You have her up to seventy. Yeah, she she is probably the key character in the entire game. Oh, I love her. But, you know, heals and steals. Yep. yep. I would I would actually uh, what I would actually do is I would looking at yours. I'd drop the black down to three and have uh, it the purple at five, the blue at five, and the black at three. Yeah. I, uh, so so she because because I. I wasn't she getting. Inspired. I haven't gotten covers for the. Uh, the reason mm -hmm. that it's set up like that is because those are the covers they got. Yeah, I the know. Blue, I know the, that feeling. Yeah, the blue and the pink is the, by far her best. Yeah, that's the she's the she's stealing and her healing. The yeah. stealing, the blue is maxed out though, right? I have it at five. No, the purple's maxed out. Oh, I don't have the blue. Yeah, I haven't got enough covers for that. But yeah, Fisherman is definitely one of my top ones that I'm gonna him, so, her and 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 Ares because that she keeps the whole team alive by healing. Yep. Yeah. And she and also increased the uh, timer on the countdown tiles. Yes. So, I, so I, find, <laughs> I find her indispensable. And, yeah. Uh, the, the other one that's really great, and you're kind of in the same spot I was uh, for a long time, except you got uh, blue instead at where I couldn't get a blue uh, cover to save my life. Uh, the three-star Spider-Man. Yeah. Two of them uh, are my uh, healers. Yep. Widow and Three Star Spider Man. Um, one of the other thing things is I the way they choose which characters your opponent is going to go up against with you uh, is uh, it's it's your top three characters, you know. And I'm sure you've been in events and you'll go to bed and you're you've got 500 points. You're in. 25th place, you're feeling pretty good, you wake up in the morning, uh, you've been attacked 20 times, you've lost 150 points, and you're now around the 200th spot. Yep. Know that feeling, Obi? <laughs> you keep saying Obi. <laughs> I'm sorry, Yogi. <laughs> well, that's what we get for having names that rhyme. Yes. <laughs> Dude, I call him... I call him Obizilla all the time. Yeah, okay. Obizilla. There we go. And that's his own name. That he's messing up. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm, I'm totally so, with that. Uh, well, now that I have my characters, it, you know, and I was talking to somebody else who likes to, you know, spread the love out. 
uh, now that I have three characters at 141, mm-hmm. the, the, the intimidation factor has really kicked in. Yeah, and people don't want to attack people, you anymore. People don't attack me. Yep. And even if, and when they do, um, I would say it's a 50-50 shot as to whether or not I win. I've woken up some mornings, and instead of being down 85, 90 points, I'm up 30. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Uh, that That's kind of cool. Uh, so I, my recommendation is level your characters to, as either to their max or to whatever their cap is because it cuts down on the p- number of people that attack you. Yeah. The problem, um, what part of the reason I haven't, I love Black Widow, uh, the Fisher Black Widow, and mm-hmm. uh, we're, almost, we're almost out of time, so we're going to um, yeah. wrap this up, but uh, we definitely have to get you back out and talk some more strategy. Um, and you know we're coming out with a new show where we're gonna, all we're going to do is talk strategy. No no news or any other crap that's hardcore mm-hmm. in it. But um, until that time, we just, we'll, we'll share this here. But I, I, I love Black Widow, the fishnet. It's just that one, the, my one issue with her is she doesn't scale as much. So when I put the ISO into her, it, it's not getting me extra HP. And the powers are only getting a little bit higher for like her damage per, mm-hmm. t- per tile type or color. And her ability is only scaling a little bit. And they, it's so expensive now. So I'm waiting for like the next time when I get like 9 or 10k ISO so I can do a few levels at once. I can't stand like doing a little tiny bit and not getting a full bar or at least like three Mm. levels out of it. You know, it's tedious Mm. to me. I want to see that ding, 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 ding. (laughs) But, uh... I understand that. Yeah, but see, Black Black Widow, Fisher Black Widow, you you saw the screenshot I put in the the group, the Facebook group. I love her. Yeah. That's that's one of my lineups that I had in there. But I know we wanted to talk about Hearthstone. I think we got like, what, 11 Mm. minutes left, uh, Obi? Nine. Nine, okay. We'll, we'll talk about it real quick, and then we'll do our, our shameless plugs. Um, and I think we'll be just good. But uh, I just want to share a few quick things about Hearthstone, because similar, it's a similar experience. At, like, from what you see in Marvel Puzzle Quest, people get discouraged, and they drop out, because they feel it's too much of a grind, or it's a pay-to-win thing, because they're approaching it the wrong way. They don't understand the mm-hmm. fundamentals of it. And, you know, like, I, there's like a guy I just introduced over all games, Opti. You know him, uh... Uh, chip, Opti decided mm-hmm. to spend like a hundred bucks in the game. Like, this is the most expensive free-to-play game I- I've had, and I'm like, uh, that's because you chose to. I-, I I haven't paid, uh, I haven't spent any money in the game yet, and I and I beat him. And he's got all these legendary cards and everything, Hearthstone. So and there's other people that do the same thing, and they're like mm-hmm. legendary rank uh, in in Hearthstone. So it's doable. This is what I'm gonna say. Focus on the easy classes first. There's certain classes you probably want to stay away from in Hearthstone. Um, and I find personally that Rogue, uh, Mage, Paladin, uh, and probably Warrior are the hardest ones to play as when you're first starting off. Warlock, uh, Priest, and maybe Shaman are the easiest. Oh, and Druid. But, uh, but hey, you know, we're not... And we're not saying that they're hard because of just they're hard. Um, they're you have to know what happens to be able to combo your cards together. That's really the only that's the only reason why we're not we're saying they're hard because you actually have to do extra things and know what things do. Know when right, to wait right. on a card and when not to kind of. Thing. Yeah, that's the thing. If you don't have like you don't want to start off with those guys unless you understand the fu- the fundamentals and like. You know, basic deck building things, and you're at least familiar enough with the game where you've seen some of the basic combos people pull out and understand the current meta. Because those, those like Mage right now in the current meta is not very serviceable unless you're playing against someone that has really good cards or you're in an arena. In constructed play, if you're playing uh, ranked or casual, uh, Mage is really hard to play with, and that's who they start you off with. Because with Mage, you either had to commit to minions or spells. You know, one or the other. You can have a little bit of minions in a spell deck, but you really need to just go full out aggro and just fireball to the face and have board control if you're going to do mage. And a lot of people can't yeah. figure out that play style. Most people just want to get creatures out and, and then swarm someone and punch them in the face with the minions. And that doesn't always work either, though aggro decks are very easy to put together. So that's one of the things is, is, is try, to, try the different classes out. 
uh, in casual mode and you just ha have an open mind about it. Play against some friends and try out the different classes and find the ones that are easiest for you. I'm just saying, though, I think Warlock might be one of the easiest and Priest because they have the, sim the most useful abilities if you really think about it. You can heal yourself, buy yourself a little extra time or heal a creature that you don't want it to die with the pe Priest. Or with the Warlock, you get card draw. And that's the biggest issue in all these deck building games is when you don't have enough cards in your hand or the right cards in your hand. You get free card draw by sacrificing two life. That's always useful in almost any scenario, unless you're low on life. Um, so you don't have to spend money. It doesn't have to be this thing where pay to win. You just have to understand, find your niche, and then when you, the more you play with certain classes, the more cards you unlock. Once you unlock the basic cards, you get... Once you get to the, hit level 10 with the class, and you get the 10 basic cards added on to the core deck. So that's a total of 20 basic cards. Once you have those 20 basic cards to work with, a lot of options open up. And some of those basic cards could do really evil things to even legendary cards. Like, uh, for example, a priest has uh, mind control, and he could take over a legendary card and put him on his side. So you don't own that legendary card, but now that minion's your bitch. So that's pretty cool. Someone that's spending money in the game or, or lots of time in the game could do pull up that kind of thing. Um, I mean, what else can we say before we uh, try to wrap this up? I don't know how are we on time, Obi. Uh, we got about five minutes. Okay, that's total. So, so I mean, one of the things I yeah. just I've learned uh, at this point, uh, and you know, I've unlocked the characters. I have uh, access to the arena. I have no business going into the arena, <laughs> and that I, the only thing I should be doing at this point is buying packs of cards. And I just find uh, I the the frustrating part about the game is earning gold in this game is a bitch. Yeah, and they're working you know, compared. To they're working on that with the expansion that's coming up. They're gonna make it easier to do that kind of stuff. So it's not so much of a grand but it's like ten gold every three wins. Yeah. And I mean, what's the, your biggest and the daily issue? quest? Yeah, and the daily quest. Yep, and you can have up to three queued up at a time. You can also swap out some of those if you don't like them. By the way. All right. But what's your biggest issue? Like, like if there's one question I can answer for you. I know you don't like the deck building as much. That part's tricky, and that's always going to be tricky for people. They're not familiar. No, I'm actually getting into that. Okay. And I, it's just, you know, it's, okay, what's the best way for me to obtain these cards? Is it going into the arena and trying to win battles there? And it's like, no, I got to walk before I can run. And that's probably, yeah. well, you know, when I get there. But at this point, it's yeah. like, okay, uh, basically, to any gold I get, I should just be dumping into decks at this point. Arena would be like, the best bang for your buck if you could win two or three matches at least. And you can win a maximum yeah. of ten. It's the best bang for your buck. It's better than buying a card pack. But you do need to learn the fundamentals. Oh. And it, the good thing about it is it and does you need level the cards. Well, see, you, that's you, the thing. You need some cards. Yeah, I mean, I don't have a lot of cards, and you could craft some of them. Once you find the class that really works with you, like, what are you running, Chip? Yeah. Which class are you running? Uh, which I'm one are you still... having the best success with? I'm uh, probably, you know, I, I'll go against what you said. I would probably say Hunter and Warrior were the two I was doing oh, best yeah. with. I forgot. Hunter, yeah, how can I forget? That's one of the best ones to start with, too, because he's aggro. Yeah, Hunter, stick with a Hunter. Right now in the meta, a lot of people are running Hunter now because he's just, he's so nasty. You go with some beasts and a little bit of control so you can have board clear and stuff, and you'll love the hunter. And maybe craft the Unleash the Hounds, stuff like that. Uh, Hunter's the, a very good way to go. But, you know, you, you, what you could do is um, use Arcane Dust. You could um, take some cards, gold cards, convert them to... Um, you need to earn the... You, you have to get the gold cards first, Yogi. You get them by leveling up. But just playing the game. Yeah. You know what? Ob you know. You know. Not Ob See, now I was gonna call you Ob. Chip, we'll play together. We'll t we'll talk about we'll All talk right. about it afterwards and get deep in it. All right. And we'll probably revisit this. Can we talk about Hearthstone quite a bit lately? So people were saying, "Is your site a Hearthstone site?" No, not not really. We just love the game. Ob, you have any quick tips? Unfortunately, gentlemen, we, we, we gotta, don't have we any quick tips. Unfortunately, gentlemen, we do have to get out of here. We do have two minutes, so I do want to give out a couple of good shout outs. Big shout outs to our new cover on geekyantics.net to the Death Gaming Podcast. The links are right there on the screen for you Gaming guys. Gaming Death, Gaming Death. You guys, 
Gaming Death. I do apologize. That's twitch.tv forward slash gaming death. You guys can check him out at 9 o'clock on Thursdays right before horseplay. So uh, you guys can, you know, you guys can get double dose right out, right? We'll see you guys right here next Thursday as always. I'm not done doing Shame's plugs. I'm just doing whatever. Horseplay Replays is on allgames.com every Thursday around 5 p.m. Eastern Time. We know that a lot are hoping that we'd be uh, we'd be the B-team warm-up, <clears throat> but unfortunately it just didn't work out that way. They do have something coming in that's pretty special, I hear, uh, on all games at the 7 o'clock hour right before the B-team. So uh, we're looking forward to that as well. Um, regardless, please show love. Uh, show your support with uh, especially allgames.com because we love everybody there and how they're supporting us. So we want you guys, of course, as our fans and even the most of uh, the people that are live with us every Thursday are from all games, which we that's that's awesome right there. We also want you guys to check out our friends. Whoa. OK, check out our friends at <laughs> Gaming Death Podcast, 42 Level 1 Gaming History 101, the B Team Podcast, Chip Hoo Hoo. R9 Cast, Knuckleballer Radio, Zombie Cast, Agents of Shield Cast, Chip, woo woo, Sega Nerds, The Angry Chicken, Castuberous Doctor Who Podcast, Orange, Orange Lounge Radio, <laughs> I almost said that wrong, and the Party Chat shows all on All Games Network, uh, Gang.net. We have lots of great content for our, our team. At geekyantics.net as well and geekyantics.com. You guys can see all that right there on the screen. And where am I at? If you are listening to us on all games, B Team is coming up next. We'll see you guys here. Be sure to tune in live at 9 p.m. Eastern Time for that B Game at B Team. And of course, if you guys can hit two up, of course, we have our, uh, our, uh, our show that's before us as well at 9 o'clock. So, Yogi, what you got left for us, buddy, before we get out of here? Nothing much. Uh, the Chip, you got any, anything else left to pimp? No, that's it. Check out the bteampodcast.com for links to all our videos from PAX. Definitely. All right, guys. This is w one x 2 All right. Right here. Was the music better that time at the end? No, I can't hear you at all on my side. <clears throat> Do that. Oh. I'll just have to. I'll edit it. Wait a minute. Because I can't hear you talk at all when you, when you do it. Like the the sound the sound is completely drowning you out. I'm saying, was it better though? Was it was it quieter? Okay. Yeah, so yeah. Well, we're gonna have to get some. Oh, say so. The remote volume is what I need to turn down a little bit, right? Remote volume is what everybody else on the call hears. The local volume is yours. <laughs> yeah, that's lower. I, the only thing is, like, uh, you probably shouldn't talk while the music's going. Because it's not going to be, it's going to be tough for you to fade out the remote and the local oh. volume at the same time. That's the okay. thing. Because yeah. you're, lo you're fading it out for your local recording, which is fine. 
But you know, worst case scenario, I'll just I'll just like uh, oh man, I'll just uh, okay. clip it as long as like I'll just pull out the audio track without the music, and then just put the music in myself post production. That's why I did the last one. The, the last the last one was the same thing. Uh, it's techno acts today in the news. What? Techno acts. It's today in the news is what it is. Oh yeah. yeah. I just okay. put whatever. <laughs> I, dude, I, I'm sorry. I'll get better, dude. I promise. I'm just. I'm learning more. I don't know none of this. So, so basically, I have to have. Do I have to have the Skype player turned up all the way in my value mixer? But then it's about fifty percent on on give or take on remote volume. Okay. Yeah. So like, even though like again, it's the whole thing. Even though it oh. sounds low to you, it's not a uh, necessarily low. Oh no, it wasn't low at all. It was loud as fuck. But I just I was just trying to make sure I did what you said with the volume control. I was checking with the the stream and they were all like, dude, volume the, the sounds good. Sounds good. It's a huge turnaround. Um all right, yeah, I was just I'll just let it <clears throat> let that minute sixteen play at the beginning. And then as soon as it's done, then I'll be like, Welcome back, geeks and gamers. This is horseplay live you know, and then go out through like that. Yeah. How's that sound? Because I what I what I do is I I take the audio, the vocals, and then if you need a little, a few extra seconds, I'll just oh, I'll fade out the, the music and then overlay the vocals so it's in the background and it's not overpowering you. And there's a lot of things that I run it through so that the, the, mm -hmm. music, the, the audio levels are kind of balanced out. And then I try to maybe right. I might add a little DB gain so that's for mobile devices, but not screeching in your ears i mean we'll figure it out right well and that's what i'm trying to do just every week i'm trying to get just a little bit better so that you know there's less things i don't like giving you a lot of work to do dude trust me i'm not i don't i'm not like that because i don't like the extra stuff but I, i'm trying to get better and better and trying to get those audio because like this today yes do i hear a bunch of white noise and everything but it didn't fucking bother me it wasn't on you or it wasn't on anybody it was just it's just everything I don't know if it's just because, like what you said with my headphones, I got to have, you know, the I'm getting some next week. I got to get some money, but I'm getting some bosses. So I hope those are actually good. So. <laughs> it to be type of those, no, no, my, I'm getting. There you go, he's back. So. I'm still, I'm still recording on uh, okay. that side because uh, the, the extended cut, because I, I was just connecting like crazy for some reason. Oh, on my side, but you think we have two? Sorry. We have two recordings to be safe. Oh, I know, I know all about that. <laughs> we we have backups to the backups on the B team. You gotta do it now. You never know who's gonna drop out. <laughs> yep. The audio quality crazy. Yep. But uh, yeah, the best I can say, Arsenal. I thought we could just talk freely and have about the two hour time slot. <laughs> Is uh yeah. And, I need your guys' names because I'll add you in here because I have nobody's name. I have no friends on Hearthstone. Uh, let me show you. We have a little thing we're doing where we're sharing. Well, first of all, if you like eye candy, just make sure it's not around. It's not one, I promise. <laughs> um, uh, Chip, <laughs> there's mine. Chip, there's mm -hmm. mine, Obi One X two, just like it sounds, or just like my name, and then my my wife is hers is Melissa Boss. Uh, mm -hmm. I, she'll she'll gladly help you and whatever you need. She'll play you so you can practice decks. Don't be mad if she just rips your ass a new hole, right? Because she'll do that. She does it to me all the damn time. Cause that makes it inviting. <laughs> oh, Batman, yeah, can't help just... us. Let me see, Obi. And this oh, is uh, dude. We're we're pushing the limit on the XXX thing going here. Look at look at her butt. Oh, uh, oh. Uh, that's that's borderline safe for work. <laughs> hey, that's borderline. I'm gonna get in trouble. She's a cool and, chick, and she she just happens to do modeling. That's a little risque. That's all. Well, I should say chick. That sounds that's not like a chauvinistic thing to say, but you know. She's, She's gonna cool be game. my next ex-wife. 
Yeah, for some reason the iPad's just saying you must enter an email address or battle tag, and neither you got to put the the battle the the nickname along with the the pound sign and a number. It needs to be together. Battle.net's really oh, weird. Oh, okay. I'll get my wife's for you, but mine's uh, Obi One X Two eighteen ninety four. Obi One X Two X. And then it's hashtag. X- Here, I'll just put it in Skype to you. Yeah. Yeah, but I linked the second link I just put in there for you, uh, Chip, in the oh. Skype chat is uh, like a little exchange we're doing for. People that want to meet new people on Hearthstone. So it's a battle tag exchange. Mm. People want to add yours in the comments. That would require me to know what mine is. Can I have your number, little guy? Mm. Please. Let's try that. Are you the paper boy? Mm. (laughs) Let me uh, cut the recording off right here. Thanks for tuning in, guys. And, oh uh, shit, we're still recording. Oh, yeah, Hi. This is just the uncut, this is random stuff. I don't think I'll even be able to upload this one to YouTube because I can't get me disconnected. My internet's like really stupid tonight. Yeah, but uh, don't forget, crazy. come to geekyantics.net. Good stuff over there. We go visit allgames.com and uh, the bteampodcast.com. I should cover all the bases. And uh, Peace! Yeah, yeah, yeah.